Every day we look at SpaceX progress at Boca Chica and there's something new to see every time. After nearly four years of development from Starhopper, the SpaceX team is now working on Ship 24 to make the first orbital flight. As the result, there's many important upgrades on this prototype, so what are the differences between Ship 24 and its predecessors? Is it finally ready for launch? And why is Starship's first orbital flight so very important? Let's find out everything in today's episode of Alpha Tech. SpaceX's Boca Chica Texas hardware endeavors began in an empty field in late 2018, kicking off Starhopper testing in 2019. In late 2019 and early 2020, the company began building the bones of the factory that exists today. Relying heavily on several giant tents or sprung structures similar to those used by Tesla, SpaceX has already begun the process of replacing those tents with larger permanent buildings, but two of the original tents continue to host crucial parts of the Starship manufacturing process. In terms of useful output, that manufacturing slowed down a bit in 2022, and that slowdown is likely partially explained by the need to move equipment and processes into the first finished section of Star Factory. But in general, SpaceX was simply focused on upgrading and testing Starship S24 and Super Heavy B7, both stages of the latest vehicle meant to attempt Starship's first orbital launch. Ship 24 was equipped with the newest major upgrade, typically the nose cone, the noses of Starship's SN8, 9, 10, 11, 15, 16, 20, and 22 have all been constructed roughly the same way. Altogether, something like 120 complex vertical welds would be needed just to assemble the most basic structure of the nose, followed by four or five no less complex circumferential welds, and that would turn those sections into one cone. SpaceX's upgraded design seeks to simplify that process mainly by increasing the size of the gores. Aside from modestly reducing the number of longitudinal sections needed to form the cone, SpaceX also reduced the number of stack sections from five to two. That slashes the total number of gores needed by at least a factor of two or three. While not quite as substantial, the same simplification also reduces the length of the vertical and circumferential welds that are needed to assemble a nose cone. Further down the rocket, hints of Starship dome upgrades are a much more recent development. Starship upgraded domes look a bit longer, with a completed prototype appearing for the first time in mid-March. To an extent, the new dome went even further than SpaceX's slightly more modest nose redesign, drastically simplifying the structure into just one main component. Whereas the nose redesign simplified nose assembly from five to three different stack sets of welded gores or tapering slices of metal, SpaceX's dome redesign appears to have more or less reduced the number of stack sections from three to two. The new dome design should only require 18 gores and one small cap compared to the roughly 40 different pieces and three stacks needed for each older dome. Thanks to the new dome's more hemispherical shape, SpaceX has also managed to improve the efficiency of the design while still making it far easier to assemble. Despite being significantly more compact than the old design, the new dome should still be able to hold roughly the same amount of propellant as the old dome. As a worthy note, starting with Ship 24, the ship's aft thermal protection also has some changes compared to Ship 20, the only other Starship prototype to have six Raptors installed. The most notable change is the addition of metal framework that covers the entire breadth of the ship's aft, most likely destined to support flat sections of insulation and thermal protection that would partially seal off the sensitive engine, plumbing, pressure vessels, and avionics components that are located inside the Starship's aft. This extra shielding could help limit the extreme conditions that hardware will be subjected to during ground testing and perhaps even in flight. Besides, the Ship 24 skin is much smoother. We can see this clearly when we compare S24 with SN8. The key, laser welding. Laser welders feature a fiber laser, and these types of lasers are more than perfect for welding parts and machinery made of stainless steel. 
But in order to really improve the strength of each weld, another process has to be done. When Starship stainless steel is produced in its factory, it goes through a process called cold rolling. That's the process of strengthening steel by changing its shape without using heat. Instead of heat, mechanical stress is used to change the structure of the metal. Strain hardening can then increase the metal strength by up to 20% and can also improve a metal surface finish. Interestingly, this has the added benefit of smoothing the finish of the welds and improving the Starship look. In addition, there's a few small but visible changes on Starship's forward flaps. Much like a skydiver can tweak their body, arms, and legs to control orientation and altitude, Starship uses two pairs of forward and aft flaps to achieve a very similar level of control. According to Musk, to improve the moment arm of Starship's forward flaps and reduce or remove undesirable aerodynamic characteristics, SpaceX is going to shrink those forward flaps further, move them closer together and more towards the tip of Starship's nose, and angle them towards the ship's leeward side or the back. Those relatively minor changes mean that a portion of Starship's forward flaps will no longer be directly subjected to re-entry heating, potentially allowing SpaceX to entirely remove static aero covers that wrap around the ship's flaps to prevent superheated plasma and gas from reaching sensitive components. This change was started since Ship 21. And starting with S-24, the methane header tank is relocated from Starship's common dome to its nose cone, with the obvious explanation being a need to shift that center of gravity even further forward. With the upgraded nose cone that will debut on the same ship, fully assembling a nose cone will now take two or three stacks, that's down from five, and fully assembling a Starship will take six stacks, that's down from seven. While obviously not a major redesign, these changes will significantly simplify and thus potentially speed up Starship assembly, which will have additional positive follow-on impacts on plumbing, wiring, and heat shield installation. All of this shows that SpaceX has put a lot of effort into Ship 24 and the first orbital flight. Why? It's due to its power. Starship will be capable of lifting 100 metric tons of cargo and people into space on regular low-cost missions. The volume of usable space within Starship is a whopping 1,000 cubic meters, big enough to fit the entire Eiffel Tower disassembled. Now that's got all of us excited. In November of 2021, speaking in a publicly accessible virtual meeting about Starship, hosted by the U.S. National Academy of Science, Engineering, and Medicine, Elon Musk discussed the project's scientific potential. It's extremely important that we try to become a multi-planet species as quickly as possible. Along the way, we'll learn a great deal about the nature of the universe. Starship could carry a lot of scientific instrumentation on flights, as Musk said, far more than is currently possible. We'd learn a tremendous amount compared to having to send fairly small vehicles with limited scientific instrumentation, which is what we currently do. Central to many of these ideas is that Starship's designed to not just be large but cheap to launch, whereas agencies like NASA and ESA must carefully choose a smattering of missions to fund with launch cost in the tens or hundreds of millions of dollars. Starship's affordability could open the door to many more. The low cost of access has the potential to really change the game for science research, says Andrew Westfall, a lecturer in physics at the University of California, Berkeley, with flights potentially as low as $2 million per launch. You can imagine privately financed missions and consortia of citizens who get together to fly things. What's more, Starship has key advantages over the other super heavy lift rockets in development, like NASA's much-delayed Space Launch System and Blue Origin's New Glenn rocket. The upper half of the rocket is designed to be refueled in orbit by other Starships, so more of its lifting capability can be handed over to scientific equipment rather than fuel. Taking humans to the moon, for example, might require eight separate launches with each consecutive tanker Starship, bringing fuel up to the lunar Starship. That then makes its way to the moon with scientific equipment and crew. NASA and scientists are definitely looking forward to this historic flight. After all, Starship may actually be very near liftoff. Both SpaceX and CEO Elon Musk say the first orbital launch attempt of Starship vehicle is approaching, but the company must first overcome some technical and regulatory obstacles. SpaceX tweets on January 12th said it was moving ahead with a final series of tests on the Starship vehicle and the Super Heavy booster at the Starbase test site in Boca Chica, Texas. Those tests, the company said, include a full-stack wet-dress rehearsal of the combined vehicle. That would be followed by a static fire test of all 33 Raptor engines on Booster 7, and that's the first time 
all those engines have fired simultaneously. Those tests would clear the way for an orbital launch attempt from a technical standpoint, and SpaceX did not estimate when the launch could take place other than the weeks ahead. Musk, though, has been more forthcoming. We have a real shot at late February. March launch attempt appears highly likely, he tweeted January 7th, responding to a person who cited a South Texas publication that claimed the launch was planned for the end of January. So far, neither SpaceX nor the FAA has provided updates on the process of implementing the mitigations or the status of the Starship launch license. However, the FAA said in a statement that not all measures need to be completed before issuing such a launch license. The time frame for SpaceX to implement the more than 75 FAA-required environmental mitigations for its Starship Super Heavy program varies, the agency said. For example, some measures must be completed prior to launch, while others are designed to occur during post-launch activity or following a mishap event. The FAA will ensure SpaceX complies with all required mitigations. So, yeah, March is likely. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section down below. Your support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time. Thank you.